Welcome back to another Fed. I am not Tom Cruise. You could easily mistake me in this thin black t-shirt. It's me, Corey Mintz, and welcome to the final, the census-shattering climactic installment of my road trip series. We already saw where my bread comes from, where my broccoli comes from, where my fish comes from. This week, where does my steak come from? I got two steaks here. One is a grass-fed ribeye steak, and the other is a grain-finished ribeye steak. One of them is from South 50, the farm that I visited this week, and another is from West Gray, both from my butchers. And I start by just sprinkling them very generously with salt and pepper and searing them in the pan. That means high heat, little splash of veg oil on one surface until it gets golden or copper colored. Don't mess with it, don't fidget. Wait to turn it, turn it, do the same on the second side, and then I'm gonna slide it in the oven at about 450. Okay, at this point you may ask Mr. Mintz, and I'd say, please call me Corey. You'd say, Corey, why a pan instead of on the grill? In my opinion, in a cast iron pan, you get that thick crust, that mailed reaction, that nice sort of copper color. On a charcoal grill, you get the smoky flavor. Over a gas grill, you get those nice black lines which look pretty and don't really do much of anything. Now we asked at the beginning, why these particular cows? Let me tell you, this is from, well, this is from a couple cows. In fact, one of the cows is the one that I met this week when my butcher hooked me up with James Scalthorpe, who raises cattle almost exclusively for Peter Sanigan on his Port Hope farm with his brother Ian. I like the idea of grass-fed beef just because it, it produces a healthier animal, in our opinion. And, and everyone, you can debate the other side, someone can debate that, but in, in our opinion, that we feel like grass-fed beef is the best way to raise an animal. We spent the afternoon going from pasture to pasture, seeing how these cows live. I mean, really, at the end of the day, what we are is we're not beef farmers, we're actually grass farmers. And then beef is the, is the output from our farm. So understanding all the soil structures and the different grasses and how they work at different times of year and maximizing that and working with Mother Nature, that's the, that's the real art here. And that sounds simplistic, and that's pretty much it, actually. Calves, and that's baby cow for people not in the biz, which is short for business, drink their mother's milk for about six months, then hay over the winter. And then they just hang out eating grass until the field is chewed down to a buzz cut. The farmers let them into the adjacent pasture and they run, gallop, some even jump, because they're so excited to eat the new grass. Red and white clover buds are top, uh, both for the sweetest and the most, most nutritious part. And it just goes bananas on it. In about two years, they're ready to go to market, which means the slaughterhouse. Almost 95% of it goes to my butcher, and yet I could not get steaks, sold out. So I brought ground chuck and cooked burgers for Skullthorpe and his parents. But seeing as my cousin Lou already did a cheeseburger video, I'm gonna focus on steaks today. Like the two steaks coming out of the oven, the reason I'm poking these steaks like that is this is how I learned to cook meat. You don't look at your stopwatch and say, it's done, it's medium rare, you touch it. And the way I was taught, I mean this is a bit of a shortcut, was, Take your hand, and that's medium, that's rare, that's medium, and you fall it into a fist, and that's well done. I'm not gonna lie to you, because I would never lie to you. I like the grain finish better. You know what, there's just a bit more fat in the grain fed, and I like that. They're both good, they're both a good steak. Okay, I overcook them a bit, but not horrendously. And that is how I cook a steak. That is where my steak comes from. Join me again next week on star.com when I get back to my regular job, having people in my home for dinner next week. First guests on my new home, my new neighbors, which I've never had before. Now I'm gonna eat the rest of the steak.